Hey there, it's Brie, and these are some of my favorite book girlfriends. So I recently did a video listing all of my favorite book boyfriends, or at least some of them, because I was afraid I would have forgotten some, so I'm calling it some of them, and I thought it would be fun to list some of my favorite book girlfriends. These are some female characters that I absolutely love in novels. These aren't all necessarily romance novels, although they all have a romance element in them. So my first favorite book girlfriend, and these are in no particular order by the way, is Zuzana from the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series. I loved Zuzana from the very first book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series, but this solidified it in this book. This is Night of Cake and Puppets. It's book 2.5 and it's just a short little novella. This book was my favorite book in the entire series. It's because it follows Zuzana and Mick's love story. And Zuzana is just, she's one of those outspoken, quirky side characters, but done really well. She's not super cliche in that way. I feel like a lot of times you get that type of character in a lot of these novels, especially in YA novels. But in this one, she was just so uniquely done and you really get a really good glimpse of, of her in this book. She works for a puppeteer company. I think she like designs the puppets or something. She calls Karu out on all her crap and she's so fiercely loyal and that's something that I absolutely love in characters, male or female. Her loyalty is just so admirable. She's just a human, you know, she doesn't have any magical abilities but her best friend has a lot of these magical abilities and has this really interesting life. But Zuzana is right there beside Karu through all the crazy stuff that she goes through, doing everything in her power to help despite not having any magical abilities. This next character I chose because it's very rare for me to relate to a character so much or at least to agree with all of the decisions that a character makes. And I probably should be holding up a different book in the series because this is not necessarily her book. But it is Tella from Caraval. You don't really get to see her personality as, I mean, like you see her personality in Caraval, obviously, but it mostly follows her sister in Caraval. It's legendary and in um, Finale that you really get to see a lot more of Tella. But I loved Tella so much because while she is a bit wild and reckless, she also is very thoughtful and again, is super loyal. There's like, there's obviously a similarity between these characters that I really like and loyalty is a really big one for me. She loves her sister so much and will do anything to protect her sister and while Scarlet is a little bit more reserved, Tella is a little bit more wild. She's willing to take risks and even though she takes some risks that I feel like other people when they read Legendary do not agree with, I'm like, yeah, you go girl, you do that. <laughs> and I just, I had such a fun time reading Legendary and I think it was Tella's character that was one of the best things about Legendary, including obviously the romance was really epic, but I just adored Tella so much. I adored being in her head and she's such an awesome character. You know, one of those characters who's not afraid to be feminine and to embrace her femininity and like the pretty dresses and but also be kind of a badass and be really brave and strong and protective of her sister and maybe some people don't agree with some of the choices that she makes but I did, <laughs> so that's why Tella is on this list. I just loved her so very much. This next character I chose because she's just straight up a badass, and that is Sadie from With Visions of Red. So the romance in this is so epic. This is a super dark romance, by the way. Sadie is a criminal, what is she? She is a criminal profiler, I think is what you call them. She profiles criminals, specifically like serial killers and murderers that are involved in really gruesome murders, and she is in the this series looking for a serial killer who is doing these really, really awful things to women and she can get into their heads and kind of profile the type of person that this would be. So she works with the FBI to help them figure out who's committing these murders. But in this, she ends up meeting this guy who works at a super dark nightclub. She goes to this nightclub frequently because Sadie has a super dark side to her. And I think maybe that's what I love about her so much. She's a little bit scary. She's super intimidating. She's super intense. And she has a very, very, very 
dark side to her. But at the same time, there's something, even though you're in her head for a lot of it, she's still kind of mysterious throughout this whole series. And I was just so drawn to her the same way that Colton, the hero in this is, he's kind of obsessed with her in somehow in a non-creepy way. And I feel like normally a character who's that obsessed with another character could come off as really weird and a little bit overwhelming, but it wasn't to me because I was like, dude, I'm obsessed with her too. <laughs> so Sadie definitely had to make this list because I loved her character so much. And the more this story went on, the more I really liked her. Next, I absolutely had to include Harper from A Curse So Dark and Lonely. She is one of my favorite characters, especially in a YA fantasy. Every single character in this book has a lot of subtle that I really loved and Harper had this subtle strength about her and she's such an inspiring character. She has cerebral palsy and she doesn't let that define her. Despite being in a lot of pain and a lot of situations, she powers through it and she's such a freaking badass and, and she has this charisma to her and I'm always I've always been interested and intrigued by and drawn to characters and people in general who have that kind of magnetism to them and Harper is one of those people but she's also someone who has that charisma and has that magnetism but doesn't really realize it because she's been kind of suppressed in her regular life until she's swept up in this world and all of a sudden it gives her a chance to really show her true colors and show the type of person she is and she's just so amazing. I loved being in her head and she has a really great sense of humor also. A lot of the characters do in this book but oh, oh my gosh I just I love Harper so so much. I'm going to apologize in advance for this next book cover because this is a very old series and the book cover shows it. The next character is Georgina from the Georgina Kincaid series. First book being Succubus Blues. This is by Rochelle Mead and the reason why I love Georgina so much is because again she has the magnetism that Harper does but it's much more on a larger in-your-face type of scale. So Georgina is a succubus and she is kind of a reluctant succubus. She's very bookish and she works at a bookstore. She is obsessed with books, specifically this one particular author, and she's amazing at what she does, but she just happens to have sold her soul to the devil and now has to work for him. And this is a very tongue-in-cheek, very funny series, and Georgina is hilarious, but the thing that I love the most about her, like I said, is her magic. Magnetism. She, being a succubus, has this magically powered charisma that just draws people in and can completely enthrall them. So it's a little bit kind of like a siren. And some of it is magically induced, but a lot of it is just her. And you see it. It's not so much told as it is shown in this book. And I think that's what made me love her so much. So freaking hilarious. And it's just absolutely delightful reading about her. If she were real, I would have been sucked in by her too just by reading the situations that she's in and she can just light up a room without being loud and obnoxious the center of attention she somehow gets the attention centered on her just by her presence and she doesn't have to be loud and she doesn't have to be on a pedestal she is just put there on her own because of her personality. Next is another one of Trisha Wolfe's characters, and this is another kind of dark character, and that is London from the Darkly Madly duet. London, first of all, is one of the best names ever. I'm kind of obsessed with it, but London's character in this, she is a criminal psychologist, and she ends up falling in love with a serial killer, and it's a serial killer that she is treating. And London has a very traumatic past, She's got a lot of things that she's working through and dealing with and she hasn't quite faced but once she does and particularly when she kind of ends up facing things and things kind of click for her she is just so awesome like in a lot of the same ways that Sadie is but Sadie is much more low-key. I also forgot to mention Sadie also isn't really interested in like getting dressed up or looking beautiful or anything. Like she'll wear baggy clothes. She downplays how beautiful she is and everything. But London is much more put together. She has this facade of being this very perfect, poised person. 
but on the inside she's got a whole lot of darkness going on and I loved it so much. I loved her so much, particularly toward the end of the book series. Oh, it was just so great. I love London very, very much. Next on this list is Flora from Her Royal Highness and it's Royals number two by Rachel Hawkins. She's like a Mrs. Darcy, I guess you could say. So she comes off initially as very stuck up. She's a princess. She comes off at first a stereotypical popular girl, which I hate. I hate that in YA. I hate the popular girl who is mean for no reason. She has an entire backstory. Rather than being mean, she's much more misunderstood and actually ends up being a super sweet, caring, thoughtful person and also very loyal person. And again, that loyalty thing, I am so into it and I just absolutely fell in love with Flora. I did not like her at all in the very beginning because I thought she was gonna be a very shallow character, but she's not at all. She is so amazing and that romance in general in that book, oh, I loved it so much. Next on this list is Greer from the New Camelot trilogy, the first one being American Queen by Sierra Simone. I talk about this series a lot. I love it. It is an MMF relationship that is in it. Very taboo, very, very steamy. But Greer in particular, I loved. And I think one of the main reasons is because she's very poised, very put together. And she's also very submissive, but in her submission has a lot of power. And she knows how to use that power. And she's also incredibly smart as far as when it comes to like not only book smart, but also socially, she really knows how to work a room and how to work a lot of these really powerful people. She can be surrounded by super hyper powerful people and stand her ground even though she doesn't really have a position of power. And I love that. And that goes across the board from in social situations and also in her relationship where she's one of the more submissive people in that relationship, and I so appreciated that about Greer. This next character is actually a character from a historical romance, and I do not read a lot of historical romance. I do want to read more of it because what I have read, I really enjoyed. I'm just not super drawn to historical romance for whatever reason, but my sister had me read this one. We read it for our book club, and I loved it so much, and it was 100% because of this character, Freya. It's Slightly Scandalous by Mary Ballou. I don't know how to say her last name. Freya is the main character in this and I adored her so much. I'm trying to think of how to describe her. So she has a very strong personality. She's super strong-willed and I think one of the things that I like the best about her is she does not consider herself beautiful. She is not considered beautiful. She... I want to say she has like frizzy hair and maybe like a big nose or something like that. It's almost like she's empowered by her lack of beauty. Like she doesn't have to worry about looking beautiful all the time the way someone who is beautiful might be so conscious of their beauty and so conscious of the fact that it's going to eventually not be there that they feel like they have to use it and make the best of it and look good all the time. She has none of that. She doesn't give a flying crap about how she looks. She's accepted it. She's not constantly looking at beautiful people and like, oh, I wish I was beautiful. She's just like, whatever, it is what it is. I like who I am. And she knows who she is and she appreciates who she is even though she understands that she's not beautiful and it doesn't matter. And I loved that so much. There's something really empowering and inspiring about that. And it kind of stuck with me. Like even though the story itself, I can barely remember what the story is about, that character in particular has always stuck with me and I think about her a lot. I must have a thing for like darker female characters and I think because maybe it's kind of rare. So this next one is another dark character and that is Jane from Jane Doe. Jane Doe is all about a revenge story. She's pissed off in this book, but she's not crazy rage filled. She's got this quiet burning anger. It's almost scarier because it's so like kind of low key. She's just kind of methodically going through this revenge plot and there's not a lot of moments where she loses her mind and gets like crazy mad and freaks out. She just very like has this very stoic demeanor. She almost feels like she can't fall in love and she can't develop super deep relationships. But what's interesting is throughout this story, she ends up falling for somebody, but not really realizing it because she is so like even keel about things and very one track mind. But I loved her character so much. That was my favorite part of that whole book was her character in particular. Next is another very strong female character. And that is Claire from the Outlander series. 
I love Claire so much, and I think a big part of it is because I could not do what Claire does. If I was thrown back in time and I didn't have the modern conveniences, I would just curl up in a fetal position and die. Like, I need a bathroom, I need to shower, I need to be able to travel quickly. Like, my anxiety would rage. But Claire gets thrown from, I think she's in the 1940s, and then she gets thrown into like the 1700s and just like totally survives. And not only survives, but thrives. Because not only does she have medical knowledge but she also has knowledge of herbs and plants and everything and she is just fine. The entire time I'm reading this series I'm loving it but in the back of my mind I'm like I would not survive. I don't know what I would do like my anxiety would probably kill me first of all. If I got sick I would lose it. I think Claire's on this list mostly because I admire her so much but also she has a little bit of an issue with holding her tongue and I loved it. Like it makes me laugh so much. Even watching the TV show, they really portrayed her character really well. She doesn't know when to bite her tongue and when to hold back. She just says what she's thinking and has outbursts all the time, even when she probably shouldn't. But I personally, I loved that about her. I thought it was so funny and I bow down to people like that because I feel like whereas Claire can't seem to hold her tongue, I feel like I'm almost the opposite. I overthink things and then I end up not saying anything at all and later I'm like I should have said something and I have all these great comebacks and all these great things to say but she's the complete opposite of me and I think that's why I love her so much. <laughs> Next is a character from a paranormal romance series that's also a rom-com and that's the Undead series by Mary Janice Davidson and the main character is Betsy who I freaking love. She's the stereotype dumb blonde but she knows it. She loves shoes, she loves shopping, she spends way outside of her means. But I think the thing that I love the most about her is she's thrown into this ridiculous situation where she became a vampire and didn't realize it. And she's just kind of fumbling through the whole thing, but also is just completely grossed out by all things being a vampire. It's so funny being in her head as she's discovering the world of the vampires because they all take themselves super seriously and they're all like your stereotypical mysterious vampire and she's like, oh my god, you guys are weird. And she's just such, she's such a girly girl thrown into this situation where girly girls don't really survive, but she does. And I just appreciated that so much. I love a good girly girl. Next is probably the most adorable character on this list, and that is Lucy from The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I adored Lucy so much. I think she's so freaking cute. Her personality is adorable. Her sense of humor is adorable. Her little quirks. I just, she's, she's the perfect quirky character without being annoying. She collects Smurfs and she always wears this red lipstick and she dresses in like retro clothes and she's super short. And I just want to hug her because she sounds so adorable. I fell in love with her. I'm in love with Josh, who is the hero in this story, but I love Lucy just as much. And the whole thing where she like grew up on a strawberry farm and everything, freaking adorable. I loved it so much. Next is a character that normally I don't think I would like. I'm not typically drawn to characters like this, but I really, really enjoyed her in this book, especially in her particular book. And that is Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Abertali. This I think is a either a companion story or it is the second book in the series after Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda. Leah is, she's a pessimist. And typically that can annoy me sometimes. I'm much more of an optimist and it's hard for me to relate to people who are super pessimistic and grouchy. But with Leah, I actually really liked her character. And even though she is kind of an unlikable character and she makes some decisions that I don't agree with, I still really enjoyed her as a character. Even though she's unlikable, I still liked her. I don't know if that makes any sense. I enjoyed this book a lot more than I thought I would because I didn't think that I would like Leah's character at all, but I ended up really, really liking her and really, really liking her story. And last but not least is a character from another YA novel, and that novel is Foolish Hearts by Emma Mills, and Claudia is our main character in this, and I loved Claudia so much because I know a few people that are like Claudia and I adore them with all my heart and soul. She's a quiet character, an introvert, and she's very low-key, 
but she's one of those people who says things and thinks things. She'll say something under her breath and has like an ongoing commentary that is absolutely hilarious, but most of the time people don't catch it. And so it, she flies under the radar, but she's one of those people that if you really sit and listen to her and really get to know her, you'll absolutely love her. She's hilarious. And I know people like that. I love the people who just say the most hilarious things, but they're not the class clown sitting in the back of the classroom yelling all these funny things. It's the one who's sitting in the back corner kind of mumbling things under their breath. And that's the type of character that Claudia is. And I loved her so, so much. Her and also Gideon from this book also made my book boyfriends list. Between the two of them, they're like dream team. I love them both. All right, guys, that's it. Let me know if you've read any of these books, if you agree, or if you have any book girlfriends you wanna share with me, I'd love to hear about it. And as always, happy reading.